Everyone's pointing fingers, eager to blame someone else for the anger and hatred in our culture today. We call it a cultural war, but it's really a spiritual battle. So what do we do as Christians when we see the beginning of sorrows? That's coming up straight ahead as Arkansas Live starts right now. I want to read this statement to you as we continue our series on the beginning of sorrows, the war on the saints. Um, when the people of God, Old and New Testament, are at their highest point spiritually, they deal with spiritual forces. When at their lowest point in spiritual things, the demon spirits have free course among the people. And right now, in our culture, the church is at its lowest point spiritually. Now, there are remnants, there are pockets, areas that are experiencing revival. I heard some, it was a reporter on CBN News, I think, 700 Club the other day that said the, the big revival, the biggest, largest, fastest growing church in the world is not Korea, China, Singapore, it's Iran. Yeah, the Muslims are getting saved unprecedented. So God is still working. If you believe what you hear and see on the secular media and reading books and social media and so forth, you're very misinformed. You don't know what's going on, really. But if you will pay attention to the Christian news, if you watch VTN, watch CBN News, 700 Club, you'll find out what's really going on. Uh, some Christian denominations don't even want to be bothered uh, with the truth. They don't. They don't. They don't let the. They don't let the truth stand in the way of what they believe. <laughs> I know that's uh, harsh sounding, but nevertheless, it's it's true. Like I was teaching a Bible study uh, on a Friday night years ago when I first got saved, and we read where Jesus went into hell. I read the scripture in Psalms and the book of Acts. And this lady, she said, I don't believe that. I said, well, there it is. Read it in your Bible. She read it in her Bible. She shut her Bible. And she said, well, I don't care what the Bible says. That's not the way I was taught. <laughs> in other words, she's going to believe her tradition and doctrines of men instead of what the Bible says. So we as believers have a responsibility to teach the truth, to to. Uh, mentor people, to disciple people, uh, to imitate God. That's what it says in Ephesians 5, imitate God as dear children. Okay, instead of uh, fault finding, finger pointing, criticism, anger, hatred, bitterness, whatever, uh, let's find out uh, what this war is all about. Um, it's not a political war, a governmental war. It's not, you know, any of those things. It's not an immigration war. It's not a um, a, a racist war. It's a spiritual battle that first began in heaven. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Now, why did this war take place? Because all great wars are fought in heaven first before the wars are fought on the earth. And the heavenly wars are a result of spiritual rulers, spiritual conflict. And usually it's over control, dominion, power, money, people, land. Let's go over to Daniel chapter 10 and let's read Daniel chapter 10 and uh, verse 12. Then said he unto me, this is an angel answering Daniel, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before thy God, thy words were heard. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am come for your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Now, you know, he's not talking about a natural king, natural prince. He's talking about a principality, power, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits. And we'll read that in Ephesians. 
He said, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. In other words, he was telling Daniel, Daniel, God heard you the first day you prayed. He dispatched me to bring the answer to your prayer. But I was detained, withstood by a demon spirit. And it says he was a prince. He was a principality. See, Satan has uh, divisions in his kingdom. He has principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits. And the prince, I used to, ha I used to have a teaching on all this where I defined each one of these, uh, <coughs> excuse me, categories. The prince is the highest uh, level of Satan's kingdom. He, he rules over kings, kingdoms, <coughs> excuse me. I'll take a little drink of water here. He rules, that prince rules over kingdoms, countries, nations, but he always rules through an earthly leader. Uh, Saddam Hussein was a perfect example of that. He thought that he was uh, Nebuchadnezzar rec recreated. He thought uh, he was some entity. Uh, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, there was a prince ruling through him uh, to steal, kill, destroy. But he was ruling through an earthly reader. We see uh, more insight into this if you go over to Isaiah uh, chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, day star? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you've said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to dethrone God. That was the first war. And that type war has been fought ever since. All of the war against Christianity, against um, ministries, all those wars are a result of this war. The war that once started in heaven, Satan wanted to be God. And, and all of the other little wars on the earth, that, that's their parent. That's their model. Satan's their mentor. So I'm going to take over. I'm control. Every church split. Every pastor, associate pastor, trying to uh, bring down the pastor, trying to lord it over him, trying to uh, take over that authority, trying to uh, destroy the credibility. All of that is a result of the war in heaven. And it's come to the earth. Uh, one music minister said when Satan was kicked out of heaven, you know, it, it says in Ezekiel that he um, was the worship leader in heaven. The tablets were inside him and he was beautiful to look at. And he, they said when he got kicked out of heaven, he fell right in the choir loft. <laughs> All the problems we've had with, with music and musicians and choir members and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he said, I will ascend above the heights of the, of the clouds. I'll be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that look upon you shall narrowly look upon you and consider saying, is this the man that made the earth tremble, that shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All kings of the nations, even all of them, in glory, everyone in his own house. That's, that's who Satan was attempting to be. He was, he was attempting to seek out and to destroy nations. He worked through uh, world leaders. Let me see if I can go over here and find a, a scripture pa passage that uh, will help. Yeah, here it is. In Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel 28, verse uh, 2, 
son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now he's addressing an earthly ruler. But this is what commentators call the law of double reference. <clears throat> say to the prince of Tyrus. He's talking to actually two leaders here. He's talking to one natural leader and one spiritual uh, ruler. Thus saith the Lord God, because your heart's been lifted up, because you've said, I am God. He's talking about Lucifer. I sit in the seat of God. I'm in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not God. And though you set your heart as the heart of God. And now, now flip it over uh, to uh, the explanation of this. Let's go over to verse 11. He says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So, you know, he's not talking about the earthly ruler. He's talking about the spiritual ruler. He's talking about Satan, talking about Lucifer. Um, the workmanship of thy tablets and their pipes was prepared in you the day you were created. You're the anointed cherub, archangel. Uh, I've set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You did walk up and down the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in the ways, uh, ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Then he goes on and says, the multitude of your merchandise have filled you with violence. You've sinned. Therefore, I'll cast you as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up. And that's where the iniquity came from. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You've corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. Pride. And he said, I will cast you to the ground. I will lay you before kings that they may behold you. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities by the iniquity of any traffic. Therefore, will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It'll devour you and I'll bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. Uh, he goes on and says, though that they that know you among the people shall be astonished, you shall be a terror and never shall you be any more. His end result is ultimate destruction. But notice he said, you'll be a terror. Well, where do you think terrorism comes from? Uh, terrorism comes from the devil. And God did not create the devil. God created Lucifer, an archangel. But in the Bible, it says that Lucifer became Satan, the serpent, the dragon. How? Why? Because he wanted to be God. He tried to usurp authority over God. He was cast to the earth. Jesus saw him fall from heaven. Jesus told his disciples in Luke 10, 17, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. So we, we know from the scriptures <clears throat> that Lucifer was in heaven. He tried to overthrow God. God cast him out. That was the first war, Romans chapter 12. And after that first war, uh, you, you begin to see wars on the earth. If you go back and look, and they've made movies about all these things, different, um, you know, wars and challenges throughout history. And you'll find the, the Napoleons and the Hitlers and all these people that wanted to conquer, wanted to control. They wanted to be uh, the Lord, the God. They wanted to overthrow. All of those earthly wars were a result of the spiritual war in heaven. And all the things that are taking place on earth today in our culture, all the wars, all the shootings, the killings, the stabbings, the murderers, uh, uh, abortion, all of the perversion of, of homosexuality, all of the, uh, the things that we see going on in our culture today, all of those are wars that are a result of a spiritual war that happened in heaven long before it was demon spirits i i met the man i don't know if you've ever read his books his name was howard pitman howard pitman by his own admission in his book he wrote several books about demons demonology and how they operate 
He was a Baptist deacon that died and his daughter, I think, resuscitated him. God did a miracle and he was raised from the dead. And he wrote a book about his experience. His name is Howard Pittman. I don't know where you get his books today. Um, but he wrote run, one called The Placebo. It's how Satan was feeding a placebo to the church. Uh, then he wrote, wrote one called Demons, an Eyewitness Account. And I met him because he came to our office one day. Walked in unannounced. We didn't know anything about him. Walked in in a pair of bib overalls and a John Deere tractor hat on. <laughs> He's from Mississippi. And he came up here to just greet us, say hello, give us some of his books. And he's a real nice, gentle man. I don't even know if he's still living today, but his books are. And he gave an eyewitness account of demons because when he died, he went up through the atmosphere into the third heaven where God is. And an angel took him up there. And while they were going through the atmospheric regions where Satan is, um, the angel said, I want you to take a look over here. I'm going to show you how a demon possesses a human being. And Howard Pittman said he watched and saw how it, it took place. He said it starts with a thought in the mind. He said there is a thought put in a person's mind. And if they take the thought and they constantly think on it, meditate on it, it becomes part of their emotions, their nature. It, it's amazing, he said, how demons possess people. Then uh, Howard Pittman asked the, the angel that was taking him up to the throne of God. He said, well, I, I don't see all the demons here. He said, no, the demons that are not here are the sexual perversion demons. And he said, well, where are they? He said, they're in a separate place all by themselves. He said, why? He said, because they are so filthy the other demons won't have anything to do with them. Isn't that amazing? Now, you, you can't verify that by Scripture. They're the unclean demons. But that's what he said the angel told him. So there are demon spirits that are warring in the heavenlies. And then we see the results of those wars here on the earth. So just remember, every time you see a shooting, a killing, a mass murder or terrorist, any of those things, there's already been a spiritual war, a spiritual skirmish. Uh, we had a young lady that called our prayer line one time. This was several years ago. And she uh, <clears throat> got saved. One of our prayer counselors prayed with her, got her born again, and then discipled her. And this lady's living a very blessed and productive life today. She was homeless, eating out of garbage cans. She was a, at one time a member of a gang. And she told us, she said, you know, um, I, I want you to know and want people to know that when Christians pray, it is so powerful. Intercessory prayer is so powerful. Standing in the gap for the land. She said, when the, we knew when Christians were praying because she said uh, all of the leaders of our gang got confused and the demonic spirits began to fight each other. Think about that. Uh, what, a year or two ago, the state of Arkansas executed four inmates down at the state prison. And I knew one of them. I had corresponded with him. He got saved watching VTN. And he wrote a little booklet called The Unrelentless Life of a Gangbanger. He was a member of a gang ever since he was in elementary school. And he said, uh, I served, and he named the gang and the leader of the gang in Pine Bluff. And he said, our whole uh, purpose in life was to torment and destroy the city of Pine Bluff. He said, that's what we lived for. Everything we did was to destroy and torment the city of Pine Bluff. I don't know whether they may be still doing it today. But he said, that's what we did. And he said, no, of course, we got arrested. I went to um, reform school or whatever they call it, <clears throat> youth detention. And he said, and then I got into bigger crimes. And he said, I wound up killing four people. He said, I, des I deserved uh, to die. I deserved to be in prison. 
And he said, I didn't have any uh, problems with that. He said, but watching VTN, I got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. He became a minister inside the prison. And uh, right before they executed him, he sent me a, a, a text and, and told me, you know, to pray for him, which I did. And I, I told him, I said, just remember, they, they can destroy your body, but they can't destroy your soul. I said, the moment you leave your body, you'll be in the presence of God. But I say that to tell you that all of the things that you see going on down here, <coughs> excuse me, I get so, and I, I, I don't need to keep saying this, but it bothers me when I see the news and they report uh, there was a shooting over here and a shooting over here, and uh, something going on over here. And, you know, they put fear in the hearts of the people. All that is gang related. It's all by plan. It's all uh, part of their agenda. And uh, there's a law against being a gang member. And I don't know why the, the mayor and the city and the uh, law enforcement just don't go arrest them all and uh, put them in jail. There, there's a law against being a gang member and we ought to do something about it. But that's why it happens. Is It's because there are spiritual wars going on and, and if it's not against the law to be a gang member, it ought to be. If somebody ought to make it a, a law that it's a, a, a felony uh, to be a member of a gang and then you can just go lock them all up. You know where they live. The, the police know where they live. They know where they hang out. All they have to do is go get them, lock them up if they had a law. And then just, yeah, they might want to just build a separate prison down there in some field somewhere and just lock them all up and, you know, preach to them every day. <laughs> that you can, this this young man that I corresponded with, he got saved by listening to preaching, watching VTN. So they're not incorrigible. They're not uh, uh, doomed to hell. You can... You can get them born again, get them saved. And uh, that's that's our job is to uh, be an ambassador for Christ. We're salt and light. But all the things that you see happening here uh, on the local news and uh, the all the violence and everything, it's mostly all gang related if it's not, you know, a family domestic issue. But the point is, is that everything that happens on this earth has already happened in the spirit realm both good and bad. Uh, so let me go back to my original statement here. When the people of God, Old and New Testament, were at their highest point spiritually, they dealt with spiritual forces. But when they were at their lowest, the Spirit had free course among the people. Now just remember this. Now tomorrow we'll, we'll pick up here. The Bible says that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Which tells you two things. Satan cannot devour everybody. I heard an interview with a young man, Dr. Lester Summerall made a movie of this. I heard an interview with a young man who was possessed with a demon spirit. And Brother Summerall got him delivered and then asked him a question. He said, now, when those demons were in you, did you have to do everything they said? And the young man said, no. He said, is there anything that they asked you to do or told you to do that you were not willing to do? He said, oh, yes. He said, why didn't you do it? He said, because I didn't want to die. He said, and I knew if I did what they said, I would die. Well, right there is proof and evidence that demon spirits cannot override your will. They cannot take you over and make you do something you don't want to do. You have to be willing. You have to open your thoughts, your mind, your soul, your emotions. You have to open your will to them. Did you hear the explanation uh, of the transvestite? I guess that's what you call them. Uh, the athlete, uh, that would, um, Jenner, Bruce Jenner, who is now, what's, his, what's her name now? His name now, Caitlyn Jenner. And he made the transition from male to female, transgender. And he told uh, in, in an article why he did that. He said, when I was a little boy, a voice spoke to me and said, you're a girl, you're not a boy. 
And he said, and I entertained that thought, and all of a sudden it became rooted in my soul. And he said, and I thought for years that I was a girl. He said, I never would uh, come out of the closet, so to speak. But he said, that's why I wore my hair long. It's because I wanted to be a girl. Where did that idea come from? A demon spirit. This is how they enter into people. The thought enters the mind. And then you think on the thought, you cultivate the thought, and you will become what you think about. That's what Proverbs says. A man becomes what he thinks about. So all through his adolescence, teenage years, and then as an athlete, and and all of a sudden one day he comes out and says, I'm going to be Caitlyn Jenner. That was his decision. That demon spirit could not make him do that if he didn't want to do it. You have to will. You have to receive that. I got many, many stories. We ministered a girl, ministered deliverance to a girl who'd been baptized in the church of Satan one time, and she wanted out. She came to us for deliverance, and she got out. We got got her delivered. Well, how could she do that if, if demons are so powerful and controlling? She willed to get out. Now, the demons told her they'd kill her, but they didn't. They threatened her, caused fear. But the power of the name of Jesus is greater than the name of Satan. And the blood of Jesus is greater than the devil. So I'm just trying to get you to see that all of these things that happen in our culture today don't just happen nonchalantly. They happen because there's been a war in the spirit over a soul, over a city, a nation, a people, and it's carried out in the earth. And then we see it on the six o'clock news. And we wonder, how did this happen? It all started in heaven. The war that we're now seeing played out in the streets of America and around the world all started in heaven. Now, tomorrow I said we're going to talk about this. Satan is looking for whom he can devour. He's looking for people. He's looking. You, you see all these people that are uh, sex traf- trafficked or human trafficking. And I listened to an interview with one of the guys that was was doing the kidnapping. He said, we look for vulnerable people, especially little girls or little boys. We know uh, what to look for in an individual. And he said, we know that person is an easy target. Well, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Talking about the beginning of sorrows. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.